Hey, what's up guys, Mikey here. I'm wearing these sunglasses to prepare for the summer. Going to the pool or beach, eating ice cream, trying to flirt with the girl lifeguards. Oh wait, I just remembered, it's February. Well, I'm not letting these sunglasses go to waste. This'll do for now. SpongeGuard on Duty is the episode where SpongeBob wants to be a lifeguard at Goo Lagoon after being inspired by Larry, but realizes what a lifeguard really does and he doesn't know how to swim. Like the algae's always greener, this episode aired on March 22nd, 2002, and is the episode that introduces the concept of Larry the Lobster being the main lifeguard at Goo Lagoon, which expands on Larry as a character in a pretty solid way. Something that, while it is iconic, no doubt, doesn't appear as often as you may think. While Larry is often associated with Goo Lagoon, after this, Larry being the lifeguard isn't shown again until episode 207, A Life in a Day from season 6, and then a few sporadic times starting with season 11, but that's about it. And he's also associated with the gym too, especially in the later seasons. This episode also officially reveals that SpongeBob and Patrick can't swim, and um... Oh yeah, Patrick also says that nobody likes lifeguards and has a furious look on his face the whole time. Now, I am absolutely stretching here, but does this mean that Patrick is a jerk in this episode? In season 3? Well, there's probably some fans out there that feel that way, but let's watch this episode to see the debut of... Larry the Lifeguard! So the episode starts up, and SpongeBob and Patrick are at Goo Lagoon laying out in the sun. They check on their tans and look at spots you can only tan while you're in a tanning bed. And then other beachgoers are praising Larry the lifeguard and asking him for some advice, including some older people. Just like we raised him. Wait, are those two Larry's parents? SpongeBob imagines being a static lifeguard up on the surface and thinks it would be so cool. Patrick states that lifeguards aren't really that popular and then ends up having to conceal his gross, misshapen body and goes off to the snack bar. SpongeBob thinks that he's cool himself without needing to be a lifeguard like Larry, but then gets struck by a flying ice cream truck. And lives. SpongeBob gets a vanilla ice cream cone on his nose, which leaves white ice cream on it, which looks kind of like the white stuff on Larry the lifeguard's nose. Larry thinks that Spongebob is a lifeguard and offers to let Spongebob patrol the beach with him. Spongebob agrees and his new status quo as a lifeguard makes him more popular. Then a montage occurs of Spongebob and Larry working the beach, rubbing lotion on people's backs, building castles, lifting weights, and hulaing. After a while, Spongebob puts zinc oxide on his nose, but right before he's about to do another shift, somebody was drowning and Larry goes out to save him. Larry pulls him out of the water and revives the guy who drowned because he was reading while swimming. That's why I don't have books. Larry tells Spongebob that that's what being a lifeguard is all about, more so than the status quo. He sets out for a tanning appointment, leaving Spongebob alone. But Spongebob doesn't know how to swim and realizes he's not cut out to be a lifeguard. He hopes nothing will go wrong so that way he can tell Larry he changes his mind after he gets back. But SpongeBob worries everybody will drown and die, so he tries to get everybody out of the water. After making up excuses as to why he called them over, some involving sharks and a sea monster, they all got annoyed and went back into the lagoon. SpongeBob got more and more scared witnessing everybody being extreme, so he gave everybody free ice cream to get everybody out of the water. This works, so he ties up everybody in do not cross tape to prevent them from going back into the lagoon for another hour. The others got annoyed, so Spongebob mentions free ice cream again, which Patrick overhears. He misreads the tape and runs out into the lagoon thinking it's out there. It's actually outside of the lagoon. Patrick got an ass cramp and since he can't swim either, he started to drown. SpongeBob refused to believe anybody was in the ocean until he finally looked out and saw Patrick drowning. He ran out to save him, but he can't swim either. He tried throwing a floaty, but it didn't go far. Use the floaty to swim and reach Patrick. SpongeBob comes up with an idea to drink away the lagoon, but he ended up drinking Patrick too, so he spit the lagoon out and went back to Patrick drowning. SpongeBob grabbed a couple's boat and rowed that out to save Patrick. 
but Patrick accidentally destroyed the boat from his panicking and they both ended up drowning. Everybody else left the beach and Larry arrived back and saved them with Spongebob admitting he wasn't really a lifeguard. Larry sort of taught them how to swim, they both got butt cramps, Patrick still wanted ice cream, and the episode ends. I have it! Ice cream! Uh oh. So that was SpongeGuard on duty, and that's a solid episode for the most part. To start things off, I'm gonna get the biggest flaw out of the way. On my latest rewatch, I was thinking to myself, why didn't SpongeBob just use the inner tube to swim out and get Patrick? Sure, that would have been too obvious, or maybe short in the episode, but SpongeBob could have tried to drink the ocean away before he uses the floaty to get out to Patrick, and they could have extended that idea by taking SpongeBob a while to swim out there with the floaty. And to an extent, that's what floaties are for as long as you know how to use them. And when he finally gets to Patrick, he would still be in a panic and he could accidentally pop the floaty with his hands or head. And that would end up with both Spongebob and Patrick drowning too. Now that's more of a nitpick than anything, but that idea wouldn't leave my head for the rest of the episode. But I still think that it could have been interesting to see if it was actually implemented. Now yes, if they did that, we wouldn't get Grand Theft Boat with Spongebob returning the couple's hot dog, but we all have to make sacrifices one way or another. And now that I got that out of the way, let's dive into all the other good stuff. First off, Larry is awesome here. Larry hasn't had a ton of focus in the series up to this point, so now that we have an episode that expands on him a bit more, is great. We learn that he's a lifeguard at the beach, and he's able to just jump into action when necessary. As well as the fact that he likes to tan a lot. Seeing him take charge as a lifeguard and save the guy from drowning is amazing. As well as just the scenes of him interacting with the other beachgoers. The friendship moments between him and Spongebob are pretty sweet. I like the montage of Spongebob and Larry on the beach, especially the music that plays. There's a lot of fun sequences here, like Spongebob still trying to save Patrick. I love how in this episode, Spongebob was inspired by Larry and thought it would be fun to be a lifeguard because of that. It's pretty good character development compared to episode 5, Ripped Pants from season 1, where Spongebob was jealous of Larry and tried to become strong himself, even though it didn't work. Here, he's not jealous at all and wants to be a lifeguard purely because he was inspired by Larry. The live action Spongebob here is cool and often used for mascots and Nickelodeon related theme parks. My favorite gags in this episode are the sharks and sea monster, Scooter getting his head hit on the rock, and of course, the flying ice cream truck. Something I distinctly remember from this episode is when I was in my senior year in high school, I had a class about learning how to use Photoshop and Premiere Pro. And one day, we used Photoshop to make things fall from the sky. And one of the things I used was the flying ice cream truck. And of course, I'm obligated to mention the hilarious irony of how Spongebob and Patrick can't swim and how this guy was drowning despite the fact that they all live and breathe underwater. Spongebob himself is also good outside of the lifeguard aspect. Spongebob was inspired to be a lifeguard after seeing Larry and thinks he'd be so much cooler as one. But he also wasn't depressed or anything over not being a lifeguard. And when he looks like one, he becomes cooler and sees how much more popular he becomes. Then he learns what a lifeguard actually does, where you actually have some work to do, which involves saving people if they're drowning, and he learns he's not cut out for it. And then admits that he's not a lifeguard at the end. It's so easy to want to change who you are to fit in with the cool people. I will admit that I have done it before, but only like once or twice. Throughout high school, I was able to make friends with most of the people I had classes with, and at lunch, I would just sit with somebody that I saw that I was already friends with and that I knew from class. But I didn't have much of a problem with anything about being cool or something. But hey, the friends I had lunch with actually considered me a friend, so that's all that matters. I like the character arc that Spongebob has. His antics to try to keep everybody from staying out of the lagoon are funny too. Another detail I like is, when he has the white stuff on his nose, he tries to be a lifeguard. And then when he's drowning and gets saved by Larry, the white stuff is gone, meaning that the secret's out that Spongebob's not a lifeguard. Now, let's talk about Patrick. I stated that Patrick might be a bit of a jerk because of how angry he looks when talking to Spongebob about lifeguards. There's also this part where he tries to push Spongebob underwater when they're both drowning. Personally, I don't agree with the claim that he was a big jerk. 
For the drowning part, I will only defend that by saying he's in a panic trying to stay alive. When people are panicking like that, of course they don't think rationally. As for the rant on lifeguards, I myself just chalked that up to Patrick secretly being jealous of Larry's popularity and subverting it by saying all lifeguards aren't very beloved by anybody. Sure, sometimes they can feel like a killjoy to those who are having fun, but half the time those having fun in the first place are being reckless and the lifeguard is just doing their job. But the excuses Patrick gave are pretty petty for the most part, such as lifeguards blowing whistles, rubbing white stuff on their noses, and the fact they have misshapen bodies. Now personally, I haven't seen a lifeguard that looks out of shape, so Patrick's excuses here definitely seem like they can be a source of jealousy. Larry himself is already pretty popular for his strength, and the fact that he's a lifeguard who's basically a hero, that just makes him even better. And maybe Patrick's just jealous of that. Sure, he never outright states he's jealous, but saying you are jealous in the first place already takes a lot of guts since jealousy is a sign of insecurity. So I would say that Patrick isn't being a jerk or mean-spirited here, just secretly jealous and a very irrational thinker. And at the end of the day, this is a good episode. It's got some great character moments and development, funny lines and gags, solid animation and music, and it's definitely an entertaining watch. Any nitpicks I threw in don't affect the overall episode, and it still works fine. Besides, Larry is expanded on as a character. How can I say it's a bad episode? Sponge Guard on Duty is a solid episode. Some great music, good character arcs, and a pretty decent moral talk in this. I'd say Season 3 is off to a pretty good start so far. But to be fair, that's not a surprise to anybody. Just like how I finished my ice cream. Damn it.